Here at Intoxia Reviews, we intellectually dissect the art of cinema, scene by scene. Here's some clips. Oh, he is. It's just a fucking big wooden doll full of cum chasing kids around. <laughs> you look up guys who poop in a bag. I think that's where you'll find them. Because he is hurt. It's probably just in your search history anyway, isn't it? <laughs> this movie fucking blows. So don't forget to subscribe to Intoxicated Reviews on all places you find podcasts. Except Spotify. We're working on it. Hey everyone, Chris Hansen here of Hansen vs. Predators and Catcher Predator. Why don't you have a seat right over there and listen to Kyle and Brandon, our podcast. According to my chat logs, Kyle and Brandon have interesting guests. No, I hated it. Yeah. Everybody's sweaty, everybody's on drugs, so they're super sweaty but also touchy. And then they touch your face, then you leave there and the next day you have pimples. Fantastic conversation. He's underground in a lab, floating in a tank of water because he almost died. And most important, no predators. Do not take product if you are hypersensitive. Oh, hey, Internet, and welcome back to another episode of the Intoxicated Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah McClellan, and Intoxicated is a comedy variety talk show where I shoot the shit with comedians, creators, and characters about the messiness of life. And I apologize for my voice. It might be a bit hoarse. I literally just recorded for three and a half hours. I'm on a roll with episodes lately. We have some great shit coming up for you guys, and this episode is no exception to that. This week, I don't have an open mic comedian on. No, no. But I do have somebody who does a different type of open mics. This week's guest is Vincenzo Ravina. Vincenzo, I actually met a while ago through friends. We go way back to house parties years and years and years ago. So I've always known him and I've been following his adventures on social media. Vincenzo actually recently appeared on Penn and Teller Fool Us, which is an amazing magic competition show on TV. He had an awesome appearance on the show. And so I thought, how cool would it be to sit down and talk to a magician? And this was so fun. I learned all about the process of getting on the TV show, a lot of behind the scenes talk in this, but also just talk about magic in general. And it's very interesting. There are a lot of similarities to comedy, believe it or not. It relies really heavy on performance and dealing with your nerves to do well. It was an awesome conversation. And I should also say that Vincenzo is also an author. He has actually published a couple books. One of his more recent ones is called Peril and Exploit and Other Mysterious Tales. So this is a multi-talented person. I was more than happy to have him on. And I think you guys are going to dig this. This is this is different. This is not a comedian. I'm digging it, though. I'm loving reaching out to people who are just doing cool things because I like talking to people who make stuff happen. And if you'd like more information on Vincenzo, he does have a website that is VincenzoRavina.com. And I will make sure to link below to that. And do make sure to follow Intoxicated on social media, Facebook and Instagram at Intoxicated Podcast, on Twitter at in underscore toxicated. Also, make sure you are subscribed on whatever podcast app you use. You can also throw me a rating or review on iTunes. That is highly appreciated. And it's a small way to help spread the word about the show. But obviously, the best way to do that is to tell a friend. So if you're digging what I'm doing here on the podcast, if you think it might be of interest to anybody in your life, please please tell them about it. Also, of course, make sure to check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash intoxicated. I'm in the process of posting a series all about starting stand-up comedy. Part three is coming soon, people. I do apologize for it being late. It should have been done by now, but it has been a lot of editing and it's actually a longer part. So more videos will be up on there very soon. In the meantime, do make sure you are subscribed on there and that you ring the bell for notifications because sometimes Intoxicated goes live randomly. Sometimes I, uh, if I'm hanging out with a guest and they stick around, I will do a little live stream, like an after party live stream. So if you do hit the bell, you will get those notifications. That's all, guys. My voice is shot. I'm about to eat some nachos. Please enjoy this week's episode with Vincenzo Ravina. I, I, 
Do you meditate? I try. Do you try? I try. I try. I me- uh, did I meditate? I meditated last night as I was trying to go to sleep. Um, <laughs> Which I know is not really what you're supposed to do for ideal meditation. You're supposed right. to do it so in like, the morning. like awake or yeah. you know whatever that kind of thing, and not lying down. But uh, you know, I, I try to meditate. Oh man, it's really fucking hard. I don't know how people do it. No. I'm very ADD and like fidgety, and I just I can't. I don't know. I- <laughs> Maybe it's also because I just can't afford the apps. Like, I know, like, there's a lot of really, really good apps out there, and I'm just like, I just can't afford it right now to do that. Right. Yeah. I have a, my friend meditates, and he swears by this one. I forget the name. Is it Waking Up? That's it. By Sam, uh, Sam Harris. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. And uh, for a while, there was, like, a coupon code that you could just keep entering, and it would, like, last forever. Yes. <laughs> there are codes. Yeah. So I did actually do all of the, like... 50 first meditations on waking up. Oh, okay. It took me like a year because oh I wasn't doing them consistently. That's right. <laughs> well, that's just it, right? You have to get in the habit of doing that. You have to like incorporate it into your life. And like that's the that's the trickiest part, right? Routine is, routine is hard, at least for me anyway. I don't know how routine is for you, but like I... I, like, I even have vitamins that I haven't been taking. Like, I just can't even get used to taking a pill right. every day. Right. Like, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Habits are like, tough. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> it's really, really hard. But we're just going to... We're going to dive into this episode. I'm very, very excited. Um, I have a very special guest. Someone different. A little different for you today. An old... I would say old friend or yeah. current... We're still friends, but but from a while ago we met. Um, a author and a magician... Vincenzo Ravina. Hello. Ravina? Ravina. Ravina, I said it right. Yay. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, I get so nervous with names. Welcome. Thank you for having me. This is great. This is this is really interesting because I, I've been following your magician adventures and you just did something very cool and exciting, which was on TV. Can we talk about it? So oh, yeah, sure, of course. So you were on Penn and Teller's Penn and Teller, Fool Us. Fool Us, which, I'll be honest, did not know of the show before oh, okay. you were on it. Yeah. Can you explain what the gist of the show is? Like, what the whole point the of it? premise, uh, it's like a, it's sort of a magic variety show oh, where I there's just that. like a variety of magicians who come on and they perform for Penn and Teller. And uh, because there's been kind of a sportification of art, uh... Basically, it's also a competition show. So um, it's fool us because uh, you try to fool Penn and Teller with a magic trick, which is uh, quite a difficult thing to do because uh, a magician fooling another magician is uh, just generally a challenge. Uh, and they're Penn and Teller. And like they're Penn they're... and Teller, very knowledgeable magicians. Yeah, Hell exactly. Yeah. They're uh, up there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Penn and Teller have talked a bunch about how basically they kind of wanted to do like a magic reality sh- or n- a magic variety show and then when they were pitching it around it was like uh you know it's got to be a competition and they see all these talent shows on tv uh america's got talent that kind of thing and they're like oh well these judges are judging a the judges are usually not qualified to be judging whatever they're watching uh-huh. and then they're also judging on like uh, arbitrary kind of ob- uh, subjective uh, Personal preference, kind of, in a way, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, and and yeah. so Penn and Teller didn't really want to be judging acts based on whether they were good or bad, so they wanted to choose an objective uh, you know, category <gasps> to judge things on, which was basically, did it fool us or did it not fool us? Right, okay. I was trying to figure that out because I had only watched yours. I didn't watch anything else like oh, when okay. the show was done. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so did he... <laughs> At the end, I was just like, "Did he get through?" I'm, I'm, I'm confused because, like, like they were they were talking, and and Allison was like, "Did you get what they just said?" And yeah. you were like, "Yeah," and and I got the gist that that you didn't fool them. Am I right? That's right. Okay, exactly. they, you didn't quite fool them. Yeah, basically, when they're like talking after the act, they use code words to communicate to me that they knew what I what I was oh, doing. It's code words. Yes, exactly. So you knew the code word ahead of time. Did you? Or, no. Oh, no. okay. Okay. But, but yeah, they were basically trying to code uh, code that they knew my method without uh, letting the audience know what God the method you. is. 
Got you, got you, got you. Okay, <laughs> that is so, okay. So, like, I have a thousand questions about this because this is wild. Yeah. So, when did you tape this? This was on March 10th. Oh so, my goodness! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> it was pretty nuts. It was pretty nuts. That is lucky. Like, you got in right before things shut down. I don't know if this is true, but I heard that this was like the last studio audience on TV because, like, the final day of production was March 12th. And, uh, yeah, I flew out and flew out of Las Vegas, came home to Halifax, and pretty much went straight into quarantine and never left my apartment again. Shit. <laughs> up that is insane it was a, an extremely surreal couple of weeks because like vegas was pretty normal when i was there and it just started like creeping in towards the end because i wasn't even paying attention to anything because no. i was like focused on this foolish thing um but uh my wife laura was very cautious about everything you know we were hand sanitizing and everything and then when we came home we went you know straight into quarantine even though it wasn't officially mandated yet but Good for you, yeah. um, smart <laughs> but yeah it was just right at the end i was just like oh this is like gonna be a big deal <gasps> <laughs> holy fuck i know right yeah. isn't it crazy just how fast it changed everything it was a matter of days truly because yeah. there was there was i remember because i recorded with somebody like the week before everything locked down and i remember making jokes about it just being like um <laughs> The coronavirus right. is going to get us. not like joking. And then like a couple days later, it was like, yeah, no, everybody work from home and stay inside. And like, it was just like, holy shit. OK, we're in this thing. And I need to ask, because I ask every guest as a mental health check in. Yes. How have you been doing during this crazy, insane time, like mentally and like just everything going on? It's an intense, weird fucking year. Well, yeah, it's definitely been really weird, but, uh, you know, for me personally, I, I worked from home already. So, oh. I, you know, I write at home. I, uh, I teach English uh, to Chinese kids from my webcam at home. I, I pretty much I get out of the house to do uh, open mic uh, magic, and uh, that's about it. So uh, basically what changed was my wife started working from home, so I almost became less isolated. Oh my God, that's so <laughs> funny. That's interesting, then you have to like learn how to work from home together mm. in like separate spaces, do your like separate jobs kind of thing, and like figure that out, that's challenging. Yeah, I, although even that has been a relatively easy transition for us. That's I mean, good. We, we had a second bedroom already where Laura could work, and I always worked in the living room, so we just kept doing it. Oh, that's really, really good. So yeah. you're you're you you did fine. You yeah, came out you so came far, out so unscathed. Th there, you know, there were a few times where I'm just like, boy, this pandemic is getting old. <laughs> I know, but, right? um, yeah, and you know, I I, I miss open mic and all that because it was like, mm. I was like, oh man, after I do fool us, I can do anything. <gasps> and now I feel like, man, I haven't performed uh, on stage for you know that. that all that all those months. I'm just like, did I lose it? Is it all gone? That's right. It's a muscle <laughs> that you like. It feels weird not stretching the muscle because yeah. you're so used to doing it. Because how regularly did you do uh, open mics? Well, I was I was doing it weekly. Oh, for wow. a, a long time. So That's crazy. Yeah. It's more than some comedians in the scene. <laughs> Getting up every single week. Wow. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's the Resolutes Amateur Athletics Club open mic. So Amazing. it was like, you know, lots of musicians and then me. <laughs> and then, you know, often like an audience of like 10 10 people. 10 ain't bad. <laughs> like a small small audience. Yeah, the smaller audiences, it can be weird sometimes. <laughs> it's like 3 people. <laughs> Oh yeah, and so like, yeah. Often shit. it's like, like once or twice it's been like three people. It's like me and the people who are doing their music on stage. <laughs> yeah, and then and then they always have like a, a musician host, and he's just like he's, you know, if nobody's up there, he's just got to keep playing. That's right. And, uh, so uh, that's wild. There's so many. Like, hey, Vincenzo, you want to come up again? Oh Anybody come up again? <laughs> oh my goodness! Resolutes open mic. Interesting. Do yeah. they do they allow comedians there? I mean, they allowed me. I think they allow anybody. That's, that's I mean, interesting. I you didn't, know, yeah. the stand-up is higher on the show business ladder than magic, so. Well, it shouldn't be <laughs> because I think, I think there, and I was mentioning this to you before, like, I think there's a lot of similarities 
to magic and stand up because actually and this is weird so before you came over i was listening to joe rogan uh-huh. and he had david blaine david on blaine. and i'm like oh me and rogan are in the same wavelength talk to these <laughs> magicians yeah oh yeah we're on the same wavelength buddy um and he was talking about how he got into magic and how he was doing it essentially to make his mother happy oh. and what i hear from a lot of comedians is, is like you know i have this one family member and i would always make them laugh and making them laugh made me so happy made me want to get into comedy so i think it's like a similar thing like like wanting that wanting to to make someone happy whether that's through laughter or in your case like amusement or like you know how the fuck did he do that right. kind of that that <laughs> moment of like being really entertained where you're like in awe of what you just did kind of thing would you agree with that or did you had, like did in you, my case was it related to a uh, family member i don't think so or like the general like the general desire to like make people happy yeah i would say definitely the the desire to share a feeling that i had when i saw magic right i, I would say th- that's definitely the case you know oh, it's like i like this feeling how can i give it to other people and like shape that experience that is so How can I, uh, give people strange weird experiences yeah. yeah and so what was your earliest memory of magic my earliest memory i probably just magic kits you know little magic kits that i had as a kid um and when i was young there was a, a restaurant downtown called alfredo weinstein and ho which do you remember alfredo weinstein and ho where in here in halifax yeah it was I downtown it was sort of <gasps> by uh where cheers is cheers still exist it doesn't a okay. new place it, it was is there like but like i know right that by area. cheers okay. in that on that street and it had like um Three cartoon character ethnic stereotypes as mascots. Okay, <laughs> I, it's, I, I, it's starting to come back now. I yeah. think. Yeah, Alfredo I think was I... the Italian guy. Weinstein was a Jewish guy, and Ho was a uh, an Asian person. Oh my and gosh. they served all these varieties of food at the restaurant. Anyway, they also had a guy who dressed up as a wizard and went around table to table <gasps> doing magic. So this, oh my pla- God. <laughs> this place was insane. What the heck? It sounds like I'm describing a fever dream. Yeah, but yeah. it really does. That's crazy. <laughs> Literally dressed as a wizard. Yeah, uh, th- that was his thing. I don't think the re- like the restaurant didn't make him do it or anything. His name was Dave Moon, and he had this massive white beard, and he was this you know old man doing uh, magic, That's and so he was cool. awesome. And uh, just every time I went there, I was like, oh, man, I'm amazed. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this magic. It's great. And, uh, yeah, I just developed the desire to do it myself. So I started, you know, uh, going to the library and getting magic books, getting more magic kits, uh, magic subscription box services. And then oh my gosh. once the Internet came along and uh, uh, yeah, the first magician was actually yeah Dave Moon was the first magician I saw. That was the, the wizard guy. And then. David Blaine and David Copperfield uh, were next, all Davids. And uh, <laughs> very common magician name. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just uh, inspired me to tr- want to do a, the same stuff. Did you have like a favorite one? Like one that like you really like resonated with you? Because David Blaine, I mean, he does some insane stuff. David Blaine was definitely the guy that like really got me into it at that age. Yeah, right. Definitely. That He's was... crazy. <laughs> he's insane. Like I'm I'm not even done the episode yet and I'm just like this is madness what he what he's done. Yeah, yeah. I like, you know, I like what he's doing, which is, you know, he does really crazy stuff that's real. Yeah. And magic like to blur the line so you're not sure which is which sometimes. And I think that's like that's a that's a cool thing to do. <laughs> that is not. I don't do that though. I'm not going to be putting a, any ice picks no. through my arm uh, on this. <laughs> <laughs> I would be very concerned yeah. for you. <laughs> I would be very, very worried. Did you get to the part where he puts an ice pick through his arm in the Joe Rogan podcast? N- does he actually he, do he it? Does it? Yeah. Well, I heard that. See, I listened because I was like, oh, "This is going to be long. It's a long podcast anyway." So I was like, "I'll listen to some of it while I'm getting ready." Um, and then usually what I'll do is I'll throw it, the YouTube version on. I yeah. just like lay on the couch and watch it. So that's what I'm going to do later tonight. Cool. Uh, but I, I, he put a warning at the top of the episode. I'm like, "This isn't going to be good." Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> He's like, "You're going to see some disturbing, <laughs> some disturbing stuff." <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely you are oh my gosh so you so you started so you started getting kits you started learning about it how much there comes a point 
in something that you're interested in where you take it a bit further. So in your case, like maybe that's doing like finally going up on stage and performing at a mic. Yeah. What, how much practice and how much time did you put into like perfecting tricks before you did that? Or did you just like, did you just fucking jump right in? I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't put that much <laughs> work into it. Uh, Cause basically I was just like, you know, I want to do stuff. I think it was like a talent show where I first performed in like junior high maybe and i was just like i'm gonna do magic for the talent show and then i like got all these library books out and i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do uh oh so gosh. i was just trying to figure out what i was gonna do what i was gonna do what i was gonna do and just ended up going up there and like you know doing something terrible i'm sure yeah <laughs> but you know people liked it and uh i started learning more magic and doing like birthday parties and and all that sort of stuff uh, and you know those shows were were not that good, um, <laughs> but yeah, I started trying to like invent new magic tricks. Oh, so interesting! I, I, I wrote like these uh, you know magic instruction books, and in the early days of the internet, there were like these uh, you know these magic forums where I would go on and like describe these books that I had written, um, and then people were like, "Oh, I'd like to buy that." And so like this uh, big magic company got interested in in these books based on my descriptions of them and then when they purchased them in bulk to to sell them in magic shops and receive them they were dismayed uh by the quality of uh the 14 year olds uh, oh work. my god um, <laughs> Jesus they did not know i was 14 uh, oh, on the crazy. magic forums and but yeah like i, I sold a, a bunch of these magic books which were really awful, and uh, i definitely regret doing that now but oh my god uh, yeah so I, I basically you know i got into magic just way too early, early. like it, d doing this stuff and then you know after lots of bad reviews on those uh books i was just like i i kind of stopped doing magic for a while and also the birthday parties were you know a lot of effort like anybody who does kids parties is deserves a lot of respect because it, it's they're a tough, tough audience tough as tough i audience. think older people older people and kids so like i have kind of the business development background and yeah. they say when you're doing a business pitch like one, like your one minute business pitch if if young kids can understand what your product is and old 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 people can understand then you're doing good because oh. those are the two trickiest like crowds to like like especially if you're explaining something really technical yeah like with a lot of technical language that just goes over people's heads like you have to dumb it down right. for those like for the children and like the grandmas <laughs> 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 which okay. is which is really interesting but yeah no i've never i'm i've never done a birthday party that must be uh that must be crazy were yeah. they were they really really young kids um I think I did like a whole range of That's of kids, kids that were close in age to me and kids that were younger. And, you know, just when you're a kid doing magic for other kids, they don't like maybe they uh, insult or heckle adults just as much, but they definitely heckled me a lot. Right. Yeah. They're like, so, what are you doing up there? Like, <laughs> yeah. And, and then I was just like, you know what? It's not really worth it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's wild. So yeah, I kind of went away from magic for a while, and then pretty much only in the last three or four years, I've mm. kind of gotten more seriously back into it. That's interesting because yeah. you have your you have your day job career side mm -hmm. um, that you do regularly teaching English, and um, and then you have this cool like like side side hustle passion project passion hobby i don't know what you would call it but like i always find it really interesting when people um like really commit to those things because mm -hmm. so many people are just kind of like oh yeah it's just this thing i do like <laughs> like every now and then but then you have other people who really dive in and obviously getting something like a big tv show like that mm. your hard work clearly paid off because you get on tv i did get on tv yeah uh, again i felt like it was too early again oh really I was, just, I was like uh i'm gonna <laughs> apply to fool us i you know i probably won't get on uh but maybe i'll get some feedback something oh, like that God. you know <laughs> you know wild. if they like me they'll they'll respond to my email or something maybe and uh I, you know i thought there was yeah i don't know I, what I, was I, the audition so so how does this work so do they post like an open call for Yes. Uh, basically, like be on the show? Yeah, it, basically, uh, they put out the call in the magic community. Hey, we're open for another season of Fool Us. Send us a five-minute video to this email address. 
Um, and so, yeah, I just decided to give it a shot. And uh, about a month later, they got back to me and they were like, uh, could we see your script, please? And I was like, OK, there's my script. And then another month goes by and they're like, uh, what's the method of your trick? I send them the method. And then the next thing was method being how you did it, how I did it. Yeah. Ah. And then uh, the producers called me and they were like, hey, uh, we like your trick. And at that time, like the video I sent in was of uh, mind reading glasses. Uh, I wear these like glasses that look like the old 3D style uh, cardboard glasses. And then I can read the person who's wearing uh, the weird sci-fi helmets. I can read their mind. Right. Um, and at that time, it was with cards. So I gave them a card and then I knew what card they had and it was like it was that kind of mind playing reading with cards, cards. With like playing diamonds, cards. Exactly. cards yeah 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 and uh, so they the producers called me and they said we get a lot of card tricks on fool us can you do this trick without cards and I said yes and so <laughs> did you have to think about it for a second like, like yeah like, well <laughs> basically they were they were like uh, yeah so yeah just send us some ideas uh and I was like, oh, how soon do you need this? And they're like, as soon as possible. I was like, OK. Oh, and so I, like, I sat down and I was like, OK, I could do this. I could do this. I was already kind of thinking about other things I could do mm. with the premise because, you know, you know, I, I was looking forward to maybe doing a fringe show um, mm. at that time, uh, Halifax Fringe in September. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, which is now not happening in Ugh. real life, but I'm doing a virtual show for Halifax. Oh, French. cool. Yeah. So oh, good. Cool. Um, and so, yeah, basically I had some ideas already a little bit and I sent them two ideas. I was like, okay, so I could use uh, ESP card or ESP cards or like a deck full of drawings and symbols and that kind of thing. Or option two, we could do like audience drawings. And then they emailed me back and they were like, we like both of them. Do both. And we we're like, <gasps> I was like, OK. <laughs> oh, my God. So it was kind of like this process of like a lot of waiting and like and then like. Yes. Touch yes, points definitely. Th- through the way. And also at that time, I still like they still didn't say like, OK, we want you to come down to Vegas and f- shoot on the show. It was, it was basically just like going back and forth on the script, uh, them uh, rewriting parts of it, me rewriting parts of it uh, back and forth for a while, sending them videos of the new version of the trick and. Um, and then, like a month before uh, March 10th, is when they sent me the email being like, We would like to officially book you to appear on Fool Us. Uh, here's like uh, all the information we need and, you know, all this oh other stuff. Oh my God. And I can imagine that you weren't allowed to tell anyone publicly, right? Correct. Yeah. And was that hard? Yeah, I would say, yeah, it was, it was tough, <laughs> you know, just because. Fuck. Yeah. Would have never. For me, it would be like, I've auditioned to be on Big Brother, like, three or four times yeah if i got on that shit it would be really hard for me to keep that exactly in. it was exactly that kind of thing because i've been a big fan of fool us since like their first season years and years ago because uh, this was season seven and Crazy. the first season was longer than seven years ago because it was first a, a show in the uk um oh really so, yeah ah. so uh yeah i've been a fan of the, of the show for a long time and uh, so i was really excited to get on it i was like oh my god that's man. insane and the other thing was is that all through this process I didn't think that I could get on it even if they liked me enough to want me on the show because I thought I would need a U.S. work permit to be on the show. Uh. And then when the time when the email came in a month before uh, a month before we shot, I um, I looked at the email and it was like, da, 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 enter your work permit number in here. I was like, damn, oh, um, there's no. that. And then I scrolled down a little bit and it was like, uh, if you don't have a work permit, that's okay. We just won't pay you. I was like, cool. <gasps> oh, wow. <laughs> so you would have gotten paid otherwise, though. So people within the States, so if they get on. Yeah. Oh, yes. And also uh, somebody in my magic club, Ian Stewart, uh, he lives in Truro. He was on the show on season six, I think. And he has a U.S. work permit. And so uh, he got paid normal style. But then when I actually got down to Vegas and they were giving me like, you know, meal tickets and uh my they still gave me like a daily amount of money for like just meals and stuff and uh they gave me a relocation fee which was the exact same amount of money they said they would pay me if i had a work really? permit. so i think they I got around it somehow got the same amount of money that's crazy yeah 
That's really inter- that's really good though that you were actually able to go. Oh, because yeah. that would be devastating to to like have this. Because would you say that this was a dream of yours? To yeah, get on the show, I would, I would say so. Like yeah, up there totally. on dream status. Yeah, absolutely. And so like to be like, okay, you're you're on, and then oh no, sorry. Like, can you imagine? Oh, oh my well, yeah, god! The, the entire time I was like, at no point did I think I was actually going to go to Vegas. <laughs> like until I got that last email a month before, I was just like, no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They like me. We're working on my act. At some point, they're gonna discover I'm Canadian, and uh, and I'll just be. I I won't be going, and that's okay. I, I was like, I I know that. Oh my god. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well maybe you know if I do this fringe show and I work on my magic a little bit more and I you know get more shows under my belt, at some point I'll be able to get a U.S. work permit to appear on the show. Um, so that's what I, I was thinking like that, but uh, ended up on the show. So ended up on everything worked everything out. Everything worked out perfectly. I totally get that like that like waiting for the shoe to drop. Yes, yeah. Logic in your brain <laughs> of like this is too good to be true. Something's gonna fuck up here because that's exactly how I think too. Mm. Like and it's such an issue for me in my life, just being so negative. Like not negative, but like almost just like yeah, I can't get too comfortable because mm. it might get taken away. So when you so you got the acceptance letter, so that was a month before the actual like live recording of it. It wasn't live; it was re- pre-recorded, right? Y- yes, yes. It, yeah. it aired on August third. We taped in March, but it, it was in front of an uh, an audience. An audience. Yeah. Holy smokes! <laughs> was it a big audience? Like, was it five hundred? <gasps> ah! <laughs> ah! That's no Resolute show. <laughs> no, no. It was a it was a big jump up. Yeah. Uh, although, like, the theater that it's shot in is Penn and Teller's show theater. So it actually s- seats, like, 1,500 or 1,800 or something. Oh, okay. So it actually kind of feels like the room is half empty almost or oh. more, more empty. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Wild. I'm not sure if I'm a good judge of how the room felt right. necessarily. Right, right, but, right. Yeah, you because you, you were in performer mode. You were like, I have to focus on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you I'm know, I, I get nervous for even, you know, the, the small Resolute shows. Uh, and my, my Magic Club does a couple of uh, shows at the bus stop theater every year where everybody in the club performs kind of thing. And uh, so I got nervous before those shows. And those are, you know, audiences of less than 100, definitely. Yeah. And uh, so before going to Vegas, I went to my doctor and I was like, hey, <gasps> beta what blockers? can you give me? <laughs> Did he give you beta blockers? So I... I was like researching and I was like, beta blockers, give me propranolol. Uh, Because I heard that that's what a lot of people use to not shake uh, uh, during uh, their performances. And I've seen magicians go on Fool Us and their hands are shaking. And and so I was like, I don't want my hands to shake. So I went to my doctor and I said, give me uh, propranolol, please. Um, And I explained the whole situation to him. I told him I was going on Fool Us. I was like, listen, you know, I I do shows of this size and now I'm doing a show for 500 people, Allison Hannigan, Penn and Teller. On, on TV, TV yeah. for an audience of potentially, you know, uh, many more than that. Yes. Um, and so he was like, oh, OK. Yeah, sure. Here is a prescription for propranolol. Uh, I actually because he, he told me he was like, I actually knew a surgeon who had a tremor. And so when he was talking to his patients, he would be like, OK, so we're going to cut you open here. And, oh and then his God. patients were all like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Holy but shit. but every time he needed to do a surgery, he would just take the propranolol and his hand would be st- Steady really? as as uh, as the table, and it doesn't. It, that's all it does. Is it just helps with the shake? Like it doesn't yes, impact it you any other way. Just with the physical symptom of shaking. So that did not work for me. He gave me a prescription for propranolol and Ativan. Ooh, Ativan worked. I Ativan love is Ativan. what I was taking. What I what I had in my system when I was on stage, I did not feel nervous at all. Shut the hell. Okay, not so nervous that's all. so funny that you say that. I was nervous leading up to it, not on stage. That's <laughs> so funny that you say that because I actually tried it recently back in February. So okay. I did like an intoxicated live show, which that was my Penn and Teller moment. Like okay, of like, yeah. this is my show. I'm hosting it. Ah, uh, like I was just I was through the fucking roof <laughs> nervous, and I was yeah. so stressed leading up to it. My friend like slipped me one. She's like, just just try this. Just try that. Yeah. And I did, and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> I'm unbothered by everything. Yeah. There's so much that has to get done. It'll get done. All good. And Absolutely. literally, like, and I and I had thought that I would take it on show day. Yeah. I was, but I was, I don't know why. I was just a little bit like, what if it like throws me off too much? Because nerves can be good in some ways, mm-hmm. I think. Because I just start doing stand up and I've been dealing with the nerves thing 
like a lot like i almost threw up before my first set like i literally was like oh, my yeah. stomach totally. it for me it manifests in the form of nausea like i literally get sick to my stomach when i'm yeah. nervous um but the times that i've been more nervous i've done better oddly enough interesting um and the times that i've gotten cocky and just gone eh, I, I got this i have not found that <laughs> really <laughs> for me no <laughs> that's you so know, interesting the, de- i think definitely the more nervous i am the the worse i do because i off you know i'll I've heard a bunch of people say like, just tell yourself you're not nervous, you're excited. That doesn't work (laughs) at all for me. That does not work. That does not work. (laughs) Because... And like you know, I, I te- you know I tested the propranolol, I tested the the Ativan because I I didn't I wanted to make sure it wouldn't throw me off. Yeah. Uh, and it may have thrown me off a little. I, I'm not going to say it didn't throw me off in, entirely. Like I, I think I did. I the performance was was all right. I oh okay. my gosh, you did so good. Oh thank you. I was going to comment on on this like at the top of the show, but like I watched it all and like. You didn't seem nervous. You had a really good stage presence. Oh, like good. you, you. It was smooth and like it was really entertaining. <laughs> I'm not used to watching magic. I've only seen it a couple times, but like, okay. oh my gosh! Like you did so well. Like it seems like you're a natural at it. Oh, good. I'm. I'm glad. It, I'm glad it uh, came off that way. So, but yeah. So def, definitely at like the bus stop theater shows or open mic, I, I'm not taking out a van. And, and it's like <laughs> that level of nervousness I can deal with. But yeah. when I was thinking about fool us and just you know. Just thinking about it, I was like, I was getting adrenalized. Just oh like God. thinking about it, I was like shaking already. And so I was just like, I need something. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, I'm going to go on that stage and I'm going to blank or I'm just going to, you know, uh, cause an earthquake with my tremors and it, it's just not going to go well for me. So I think I did a, you know, I took a full out of it and I felt like that was not perfect. So I did a half on the day. That's probably a better idea, mm. and that's probably what I should have done. <laughs> <laughs> like a turn back time, next live show, well, taking it out of me. Did it not go well, or did it go well? Oh no, it went really well. Okay, well, it went well. really well. But it it was um the, one of the most stressful experiences <laughs> of my entire life. <laughs> like I truly have never felt. Like literally, I was like filling out a job application the other day, and mm-hmm. one of the questions was, "What was the hardest thing you've ever done?" And I literally was like. Well, first I was like, do you mean like in my personal life or like professionally? It's really weird to ask that in a job application. Like I'm assuming that if it's a job application, you're referring to like a work situation that was really tough or like that's what I'm assuming. Mm. Um, But I was like, yeah, I planned a whole entire like live comedy show thing and I hosted and produced it all myself. And it was really stressful, but I made it work. (laughs) I was just like. (laughs) <laughs> it's just like that's literally the hardest thing I've ever done because I had to I had to play so many play so many roles in it. Right. You know, you're marketer, you're the actual you're actually setting everything up, then you're actually hosting it. Yeah. And I remember like on the day of, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to say up there. Mm. Like what am I going <laughs> to yeah. Like what the heck? I don't even have a script. <laughs> like I'm just I'm just winging it and it, it it worked out. But the nerves thing is yeah, with any type of performing, it's so strange because, like, I've been podcasting for so long and I don't feel nervous at all doing this. Like, mm-hmm. there's an audience, but you don't see them. Um, but, like, as soon as... <laughs> hey, audience! <laughs> uh, as soon as you step out physically in front of people, it's it's nerve-wracking. Yeah. It's nerve-wracking. And usually I'm most nervous leading up to it. And then once I get into it, mm-hmm. I'm a lot better. Same. Um, but... Yeah, yeah. So I, I just, you know, I, I felt like I did not have that luxury of, you know, <laughs> easing into things uh, mm. on Fool Us. And so... You went from zero to 60, truly. Yeah. You went from little open mic shows to huge, huge, huge. Yeah. <laughs> like, what can you... Like, do you have any other... Um, so you did Penn and Teller, which is amazing. Um, do you have any other, like, goals for yourself that you're setting in terms of, like, the magic? Uh, y- my goals are... Pretty much just to do fringe. Yeah. Um. I you know I'll do the the virtual fringe, but I was really looking forward to doing like a a live show. So, uh, yeah. 2021. Uh, yeah. September 2021. Uh, I'll do the the live live show. I think the virtual show is cool though as well because I, yeah. I I did like a a preview performance and it went pretty well and people liked it. So. Was that a, like a Zoom call? With yeah, people it's watching? a Zoom call, and then you know there are people on screen, and then oh. it's interactive. So like people are making choices uh, on the other oh. side of the screen, and, and the magic is happening that way. Very cool. Um, 
but yeah, so my goals are basically do fringe and then maybe do some other fringes. Like uh, some other shows. And uh, yeah, and so I have no goals towards being a professional magician because when you're a professional magician, you have to do gigs that you don't want to do. And my only real interest is in doing um, shows ones, that I want to do. Ones that you want to do. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, sounds bitter to say it, but like sometimes when you pursue something as like your number one career, you'll end up hating it. Uh, yeah, definitely. A lot of people have said yeah, you, that. I hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah, like don't do like like the don't do what you love kind of thing. Like like enjoy what you love, but don't do what you love because you'll end up hating it. I'm like that's so bleak. That makes me so sad. Yeah, you know, I, I listen to a lot of uh, podcasts from magicians. You know, Ooh, magic s- podcasts where they talk about performance and that kind of thing. And some of them are so jaded. Yeah, <laughs> but same with comedy. Yeah. Oh no, it's comedians. Yeah, absolutely. Because like I'm just like, and I'm kind of in that similar boat where it's like I love doing this. Definitely don't want to pursue it as a career. Right. Most unstable career right now. Like, it really, like, it's scary because, like, you know, comedy clubs are closing. Festivals are being canceled. Like, performers in general yeah. are really taking a fucking hit because of this freaking COVID thing. Like, it's, it's it's really, it's uncertain. and But it's also really cool, too, because you can see how people are adapting. Yeah, this whole virtual show thing is like not really something I was aware that existed prior to this. And now it's like a whole new category for all of these arts. Right. Yeah. Like you can like do like a variety show on Zoom. Yeah. So have you done one yet or are you about to? Um, yeah. So I, I did one uh, sort of preview performance of the virtual magic show. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it went well. And I'm about to do a bunch of performances for Halifax Fringe, which is, I believe, is September 3rd to 10th. Oh, 13th. coming 13th, 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 13th. Ooh, big, big yeah. plug then for Halifax Fringe Festival. Check that out if you're mm-hmm. if you're interested. Yeah, I think there are about 20 performance, performers in, like, uh-huh. or teams or troops or, oh, yeah. <laughs> so interesting. Okay. And so when you did the Zoom show, um, how did you find that? Because I actually attended a Zoom comedy show. Yes. And I thought it was one of the most awkward experiences of my life. <laughs> Because everybody, most everybody who was watching as an audience member, because like you enter the call like an audience member, but like there's comedians talking, um, like they just turned off their mic and their webcam. So all you saw was like names, right? <laughs> little boxes with names and the comedians are just doing their punchlines and they're like, and then he said, right. Yeah. The and lack they're of waiting. Laughter. They're waiting for like the little noises, the little like inflections, like, and they're not getting that. And that is, I mean, mad props to anyone who does that. Cause that that's tough to, to like be up there doing it, and you're not going off of the sounds of the people in the audience. Yeah, um, I I think that's probably very difficult um, yeah. uh, from uh, for comedians because you know the, the, the laughter is kind of necessary. Um, and I was listening to uh, Piff the Magic Dragons podcast, and he Ooh. was talking to Judah. What do you know that stand-up comedian? I know I, when Judah you said Piff the Magic Green. Dragon, I, I just thought of Puff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's basically this British guy who's dressed in a dragon suit and he uh, is very foul-mouthed and insults the audience constantly. Um, <laughs> I gotta check that out. He's, he's very funny. Uh, but yeah, the comedian he had on was Judah Friedlander. He was on 30 Rock. I don't okay. know if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. Okay. But anyway, he was saying that he's been doing virtual shows and basically he goes into the shows and he says, okay, audience, none of you mute your mics. Good. So Good. Because he, he wants the laughter. And, you know, but I it's, think st- that it's still be a, a little awkward because it's like, you know, if people are laughing, then like Zoom's not equipped to, because uh, like we'll cut people off. It chooses who, who the, where the sound comes from and all that. That's right. That's right. Although I am learning a lot about um, Zoom webinar now, which is like a different oh. um, function of Zoom, which is like, a moderator has control over whose mics are on and stuff like that. So, like, uh-huh. they could, like, if they knew when the punchlines were coming, they could go, like, unmute, unmute. <laughs> but it would it would be a lot of work to do that. You'd have to kind of know exactly when to do it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a whole new skill set. It's a whole new skill set. It's a whole new world right now. And, like, who knows what's going to happen. But I think, I think people who love it are going to just plunge forward and adapt. And because these are things that, like, like it makes you happy doing magic like you enjoy doing it and yeah and and like you're not gonna stop doing what you enjoy just because you can't physically be in front of people you just you just adapt yeah you find ways to to make it happen um so oh my god going back to like the tv production side of things so i'm trying to think what what was um yeah what was actually filming it like like was the process intense was there a lot of like 
rehearsals and like (laughs) (laughs) the process was okay well you said a lot of rehearsals there were so many rehearsals on my part because like Mm. i uh you know when the word go came i was just like okay we i have to rehearse this twice a night for the rest of my life kind of thing (gasps) uh just because you know it was the script was written and rewritten back and forth between me and the producers and then i was So I had to have it like word perfect. I had to remember what to do in every part of it. And it's like some some things that I said were not necessarily intuitive with what I was doing. And so I Uh, had to like really memorize it hard. Oh, my God. uh, My wife, Laura, uh, she played Allison Hannigan like a thousand times over and over again. Like she memorized it just as well as I did just from repetition. She didn't need to memorize it, but she did. Um, And then I had friends coming over, like my friends uh, in the Magic Club, Lucas and Mike, and my family came over, uh, my mom, my brother, my dad, and they played uh, Allison Hannigan or Teller. And uh, my friend Mary came over. I had all my friends coming over to my apartment to help me run through it over right. and over and over again uh just and also just so i didn't exhaust laura like she had yeah. to do it the most but I, I was like okay we're gonna get in more people to to uh did you have people watching you too again. like a fake audience i didn't have a f- well w- in the cases where like my family came over uh and there, i only needed two of them at a time yes there were other people watching uh, mm. so they could like pretend and also at open mic i i went to open mic and i was like okay guys it was actually i think it was valentine's day or something i went to open mic and um, it was, they, they put candles on the table. It was a low-key, quiet atmosphere. And I was like, hey, guys, usually when I come to open mic, I try to match the, uh, you know, the feeling <laughs> in the room. Tonight, uh, I'm going to do this trick Vegas style. <laughs> I didn't explain why. I was just like, so if I say things that don't make sense about 500 people being in the audience or that kind of thing, just go with it. <laughs> That's like a comedian prepping for an HBO special <laughs> showing up at a comedy club like... I'm just gonna test some things out on you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So yeah, rehearsed it so 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 many times, mm. and even in my living room with my family and my friends, I was not nailing it. So I was yeah. like, you know, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, I am going to just go oh. on stage and uh, like blank. blank. Yeah, <laughs> I feel you. Honestly, like everything you're saying is resonating with me because doing stand up, like I've only done, I only had five to seven minutes of stand up, mm-hmm. but. I rehearsed the fuck out nice. of like my second set I did was like a little bit of a bigger show and truly the only thing that eased my nerves was repeating and doing it over and over and over again mm-hmm. and I truly believe in that the repetition thing yeah. and and the more you say it um right. the more it's really going to stick in your stick in your head even though you feel like it's not going to yeah. but it'll come back it's I, crazy I, I was using every trick because like uh I was writing it down point form like just bullet points kind of thing and then I was writing it the entire thing down over and over again longhand and oh I was recording it and then listening to it all the time yeah <laughs> yeah this is very um, similar so, yeah i was doing like everything i could to just get it into my head because not only do you have the script side so what you're saying mm-hmm. and like you're like the, i guess i guess the um the performative side of magic mm-hmm. but you also have to actually like do the logistics of the trick like you have to do the trick so like you have two things to worry about you know like with stand-up it's like yeah you just gotta fucking say the jokes and connect with, <laughs> connect with the crowd but like you you have all these other logistics that you have to make sure are in place for your trick to work yeah absolutely and so, just yeah it's that's it was, a whole other thing it was pretty tough um, oh my because gosh. when i do you know the bus stop theater open mic i don't go in with a word perfect script i kind of no. just I, ca- I i have an idea of what i'm going to say and then i go through it and then it gets refined and the more i do it the better the the, the more i have the words down right, right. <laughs> um, oh my gosh that's so crazy. this is my first you know I, I did plays in like elementary school and and oh. stuff like that so i I had to, but not for a long time. It, it's been a very long time since I had to memorize a script kind of thing. Well, you're uh, really well-spoken, though. Like, you're a very well-spoken person, I That's find. That's very kind and, of you to say. Articulate. I don't think so. Artic- <laughs> articulate. No, I truly feel that way. Well, I appreciate that. You should do a that. podcast. You should do a magic podcast. Okay. Just saying. I'll try. <laughs> 
<laughs> I thought about it, but uh, yeah. Uh, Got a good voice for it, I feel. Oh, thank yeah. you. Um, that but, is so interesting. But yeah, you asked me uh, the actual sh- show filming. It oh, was yeah. intense. Yeah. Uh, when I got there, there were not that many rehearsals there. Um, I was rehearsing in the hotel room with Laura, but uh, <laughs> a thousand times <laughs> over and over again, and twice a night, twice a night. Uh, but um, the I had one rehearsal in front of the producers, which was very intimidating because mm. it was like a boardroom with like a U-shaped table <sighs> of like, you know, the the writers here, a producer here, a producer here, a producer here, the oh magic. Gosh. Oh, what's happened? Oh, it's all good. It okay. Just, it, uh, it scares me every time it does that. I'm like, <laughs> everything's gone. It's happened before. My computer is just <laughs> during an episode. And I'm like, fuck. But the program I use uh-huh. does backup, so it's, it's all oh, good. Oh, nice. We good. Um, yeah, so sorry. What were we saying? Oh, we were yeah. So the- I, I was, bit, you know, the rehearsal in front of the panel of producers was very nerve wracking. Uh, definitely extremely nervous for that. That's and so uh, But it went, you know, it went okay. Um, and the producers didn't have many notes for me. Like, actually, the notes that they did have, like, <clears throat> uh, when I was sending them, video of me doing the trick in my apartment it was like eight minutes and they were like okay so this needs to be five minutes and i was like okay here's what we can cut we can cut this second esp cards phase because they wanted me to do the esp cards thing twice and i was like i think we can lose that how about the part where i talked to penn and teller uh, i think we can lose this part oh uh, my right gosh. in the middle the, the part where i talked uh, there's it didn't air the part where i talked to penn and teller uh, so basically in the rehearsal room they came up to me at the end and they were like okay you were right we're going to cut that second esp cards thing and i was like yes oh my gosh um, and then when we got it on stage and I, I did the part where i talked to penn and teller in the middle but then they cut it out of the actual show and I was uh, like I was right again oh my god because I didn't like that part either <laughs> they should have listened to you from yeah. the get go and there was also like a topical joke about Wonder Woman uh, <gasps> oh and, really uh, Wonder Woman is n- is not in theaters so it's not oh topical my at all god. so they cut that out in editing too and I didn't like that joke either so I was so happy with the edit I was just like everything I didn't like is gone <laughs> that is so crazy because honestly I mean and I guess this is why producers do what they do because to me watching your segment it didn't seem un- like it seemed really good and like natural yeah. but like you were saying that you know you were fed lines and like there was lines that like you wouldn't normally say and stuff like that it's just so interesting to me like how they they get you to say certain things <laughs> right that was like d- that was during like the uh, the interview portion which is uh, where they they like shoot a bio of you basically that's right like a um, and uh yeah, th- that was also nerve wracking. Like that was a like, yeah, oh man, that that interview <laughs> was basically like it was in a tent, basically. Like oh, they really? had a, a tent with a green screen in it in a disused restaurant in the uh, the Rio Hotel. Yeah, it was okay. like a, it was like a closed restaurant, and they like put a tent in this room with a green screen, and then uh, they interviewed me in that room oh that's wild and, uh yeah and, and, then, but there was and they gave me a couple of lines that was like uh you know i'm a <laughs> i'm a master jack, of jack, jack of all trades master of some, some? and i mean yeah <laughs> i ch- i chose the inflection of that line but because i think he wanted me to say it like i'm a jack of all trades and a master of some or something i don't know but um yeah yeah a little my more story, my, my story producer was very nice and awesome actually like it really really very kind Aww. but uh just the some of the the things that i said during the interview they got me they had kind of written some lines based on my pre-interview to kind of like condense uh, them and okay. make them punchier i guess uh-huh um and i was like well i'm not sure i would exactly phrase it this way but sure i'll say that oh my gosh <laughs> that's funny that reminds me again of like reality tv like big brother and stuff right because they they do these things called the diary room sessions which is like them just talking to the camera and sometimes like when i'm watching it i'm just like this is so fluffy and not like it, yeah. it, it it's just such obvious fluff yeah but then the uk big brother it's unfiltered. All probably. bets are fucking off. Right. And it's just fucking these <laughs> these characters just being themselves. I'm like, I like this so much more. I can see why they do it. It's just so much. I bet it's much tougher in editing to yeah. have to edit down like my mouth vomit into yeah. um, something coherent. And they're just like, okay, 
this is what you said in the pre-interview. This is a way to get it into one sentence. That's Can you say this? Uh, um, and, and, and hey, yeah. like that's a skill, just Absolutely. being able to, to condense things. And yeah, so that bio day was uh, the <laughs> interview. And then we went to like other parts of the Rio Hotel to uh, reenact me in my apartment and reenact me doing open mic. Uh, so oh, that was reenactment or uh, dramatization, really. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, basically they, yeah, they just like set up an area that was like, okay, this is our open mic area. <laughs> this is your apartment area. Ah! And <laughs> ah, ah, that's wild. Yeah. What about the shots of? Because there was shots of like you like outside and it was snowing. Was yeah, that real? So that, that was real. Okay. That was they were before I went to Vegas. They were just like, hey, if you can shoot anything around Halifax um, and send it to me, like that would be uh-huh. great. If, if you want to do any of that, no. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try and you know get some interesting shots of that. That is, that is interesting. I actually went to Citadel Hill first, and it was a windy day, and I was alone with my phone on a tripod, and the wind came and it blew my phone into the mud, and then I had to dig all the mud out of the lightning port with a, like a, a safety oh pin. <laughs> Honestly, that would have been the most Halifax shot ever. Because of the fucking wind here. Yeah. That would have been very appropriate. Just the wind knocking over your camera. Yeah. That was, that's like a really good idea. So yeah, the shots that actually made it into the episode, uh, my uh, my wife, Laura, helped me with. She oh, helped me with everything. Shout she, out to your wife, Laura. Yes. That's, that's, that must be exciting for her too, like being able to see you. Uh, like, and so she came with you. Yes. Yeah, she came down. Uh, she couldn't come with me uh, like the same day because she, she couldn't get off work uh in the right amount of time but she, uh, came okay. out, she came out like the day after i flew down i was down in vegas for like five days she came down for four and uh, uh yeah it was awesome i'm really really glad uh she came because and also uh my friends lucas and emma came That's so awesome. basically we had like a fun time in vegas uh i was gonna say also, did you did you get to have some fun? i had downtime yeah my friend uh ian stewart who was on the show um he basically told me don't bring anybody. You're going to be working the whole time. You're not going to be happy if you bring anybody. Oh, really? Be- well, yes. And I think he had a different experience than me because mm-hmm. his trick um, involved crossbows, like electronically shooting at targets uh, near him. And his bio segment involved him going out into the desert and blowing stuff up because he's like a he like juggles chainsaws. He does all this crazy stuff. Holy smokes. So, so I can imagine like... Jesus a lot more production on his whereas mine's like hey i work from my apartment and i do open mics and so there was not as much Here's required for me guards. yeah yeah <laughs> i mean i made the helmet the yeah. hel- can we talk about the helmet the helmet so you made you made this helmet how long did that take um i mean it it wasn't like consistent work so, but I, I worked on it for like two three weeks to to make the helmet um and I just had like a bunch of electronic garbage that I was gluing to it. And my dad helped me like uh, attach the thing on top of it. And um, I also, when I put on the helmet, I was like, you know what? This is slightly tight on my head. I bet right. Teller's head is be- bigger than mine. So I like hacked out the foam to make it uh, bigger. the right size for his head. <laughs> God love ya. Yeah. And you made that, so you made that helmet after you got accepted, like for the show? Or did you make it beforehand? Um. I made it, yeah, no, I made it after I was 100% accepted mm-hmm. because although I was thinking of making a helmet, I was, you know, I still had time before Fringe. So I was like, I'm going to make a helmet for Fringe, but, right. you know, I don't have to make it right away. Um, previously, I've been performing this trick, uh, you know, sans helmet, just, you know, right. l- lower tech. It, less showy. Less showy, yeah. Yeah, you kind of had to amp it up for the show, which which is really, that's really fun, though. That's oh, yeah, like, absolutely, because, like, you know, I definitely wanted that um, mm. for the Fringe show and, and other stuff, but I just hadn't hadn't done it yet. Right. I noticed that you're doing the thing that a lot of comics do, which is when, when, when we talk about, like, how you did, you go, yeah, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like yeah. I feel like a lot of performers um, are like their own biggest critics. So how did you feel? So when all was said and done, you did the actual the whole thing. When you were done with it, how did you feel? Did you walk off going, I fucking killed that? Or were you like, yeah, it was all right? <laughs> yeah, so um <laughs> fascinated by this because it's because as someone who's watched friends do things i'm like yeah. you did so good oh my god and then like and then they're just like yeah i did okay it's just so interesting 
Oh, um, yes. I'm a very much, I see the flaws in everything I do and mm. predominantly the flaws. Um, so <laughs> You're a perfect guest for this show. We all do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, good. Um, so, yeah, basically, um, yeah, leading up to Fool Us, I kept telling Laura, I was like, okay, <laughs> if I can get on stage and say my lines and get through it and not freeze up, I'll be happy. Yes. And then... As soon as I got got off stage, I was ecstatic. I walked oh, off stage and I was like, gosh. I did so well. <gasps> that went perfectly. Two minutes later, I was like, regrets, mistakes. Oh, I regret it. Oh, oh no. no. Why did I do this? Why did I do this? So like my, my <laughs> I was ecstatic for like, you know, two to five minutes. <laughs> two minutes of bliss. Yeah. Two to five minutes. I was psyched with how I did. Oh, and then gosh. immediately after I was just like, oh no, I didn't say this. I didn't do this. I mean, the, the actual performance. I said everything I wanted to say because yeah. like, I had memorized the script. I had done the script exactly as I wanted to do it. The interview with Allison Hannigan, I thought, went uh. very poorly. <laughs> oh, but I mean, they edited it. You know, I was talking to her for a while. Oh, so, okay. Uh, Interesting. They, they plucked out, you know, the two best parts, pretty much. Talking about and, Nova Scotia. And put them in there. And, uh, but yeah. yeah, basically, yeah, I just, they, they pre-interviewed me. Like, okay. Before the show, uh, before I went on stage, they keep you in a uh, in a in a big room actually under the stage. It's like oh, wow. it's like they don't have a backstage at Penn and Teller; they have an under, under the stage. stage. And so, like, there's lots of like Penn and Teller props down there. And then, like, in the very corner, there's like a couple of couches they set up for uh, the magicians to pace nervously. <laughs> for, oh my god! And um, I so, imagine. while I was down there, the uh, writer and uh, someone else i guess i I don't know who that was Mm. exactly what her her, uh, title was but basically they were pre-interviewing me for allison like the allison pre-interview and so they were asking me questions and it was a little bit intimidating because they were like uh, okay so what about this what about this and then i I would say something and they'd be like okay all right we need stories (gasps) what stories do you have and i was like oh god (laughs) stories what Um, oh, God. <laughs> I'm so nervous for past you right now. Like, I'm having secondhand nervousness for because I can just because was this was this the day of the show that they were doing this pre-interview? Yeah, this was like an hour before I went on oh stage, kind of thing. Oh my God! Why don't uh, they do it sooner? I don't know. I don't oh. know. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I was I did have half my Ativan, so I wasn't as <laughs> nervous as I would have been. I wasn't as petrified as I would have been. But still, I was just like. Huh, boy, this is uncomfortable a little bit. Um, but yeah, so basically I, we, we came up with some stuff I could say and they were like, okay, yeah, say this and say this. And I was like, yeah, okay, if I say those things, I'll be fine. I said none of what really? I said in my pre-interview. Like I just started saying other stuff and I was just, because like, yeah, the, the way Allison was asking me some of the questions, I was like, like I didn't clock that I was supposed to go into this story oh. or this story. So I was just saying, what? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, uh, you know, this... Yeah. Uh, one sentence answers. Yeah. And she'd be like, okay. And then. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then. And then uh, uh, but yeah, so uh, parts crazy. of the interview uh, went well. And uh, and also, like, um, one thing that was definitely true is, is that, like, leading up to it, Laura was so excited for me to be on the show because. I would get to meet Allison Hannigan. Hannigan. That was her main reason for being excited for me. She was like, you get to meet Allison Hannigan? And I really wanted to say that to Allison Hannigan, and I didn't. Oh, you wanted to say that your wife yeah. was yeah. a huge fan? Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. Did, did she get to meet her? No. Oh, no, sucks. I mean, I, mean, you know, yeah. I barely got to meet her. <laughs> you, only, you only saw her on stage? She was in the makeup room, mm. and I said hello to her, and she said hello to me. And then I saw her on stage. Right. Yeah. That's wild. Because even though it's like barely a game show, it still legally uh, operates via game show rules. Yeah. So like Penn and Teller are strictly sequestered from the contestants. Right. And that kind of thing. Um, yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> and so meeting that Penn and Teller too, that was all done on stage? On stage, yeah. I was Although, gonna I was gonna ask yeah. you like what were they like, but I guess I guess what so, they were like was what we saw kind of thing. Y- yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. They they were quite kind uh, uh, during the the after after performance part, and I I previously had met them because after their shows they do a like they stand in the lo- in the lobby and they do a meet and greet with like anybody who wants to talk to them after the show anybody uh-huh. who. 
so they, they stand there for like 45 minutes an hour oh, wow. talking to everybody taking pictures and stuff so I had previously gone to uh, Vegas um, for my bachelor party because oh, nice. my best man Cameron mm -hmm. uh, surprised me with a trip to Vegas did he yes, really yes holy uh, shit which was incredible what an incredible uh, experience we went down to Vegas we went to see five magic shows in three days <laughs> <laughs> and um, we did none of the strip club or gambling stuff that you would expect from a bachelor party. We just went to magic shows. That's adorable. <laughs> and also, like, anyone listening, try to fucking top that. <laughs> it's uh, good because it's personal to you. Like, he knows, he knew that you, yes. that's what you wanted to do. So, yeah, that makes the, that makes the best bachelor party is when yeah. it's, like, something that you really enjoy. So, yeah, we had, like, second row seats to Penn & Teller, which was incredible. And then after the show, I got them to sign my Penn & Teller book that I had from my child. Childhood, and that was really nice. We took pictures, oh uh, so that was great. And actually, during that show, um, before the show, they like let you go on stage and like examine some props and stuff before the show starts. Like everybody, in the, anybody in the audience can go up and then sit back down. And so when I was on the stage, I was looking out and I was like, "So this is what it's like <gasps> when you're on Fool Us." And then I went back and I sat in my chair. Oh my God, and so I was like, "That's so cool." Yeah, it was. It was a. Uh, it was an awesome trip. I, yeah. And, and, you, you, and at that time, you probably had would never think that you would be there. Nope. No, nope, didn't think. Didn't freaking think it. made it happen. Um, yes. OK. What was the question? I don't even remember. Oh, yeah. Well, pretty much I was just going to be like, what what was it like meeting Allison and Penn and Teller? Right. OK. But like, so yeah. the day after uh, my performance, um, I was kind of jealous of Lucas and Emma and Laura and the audience members for getting to sit in the audience and watch an episode of Fool Us being taped. Yeah. And so, uh, and contestants are not allowed to watch other contestants. Um, so I asked the producers, hey, I'm not a contestant anymore. I taped yesterday. Can I go be in the audience for the show? And they were like, yes. <gasps> and I, I got to be in the audience for a show. And so oh, that's awesome. after that show, I went up to Penn and I was like, hey, thanks for having me on the show and blah, blah, blah. We shook hands and, and all that. So I always get nice. them mixed up. Was Penn the one? Penn is the very tall guy. Was Penn, Penn wasn't the one that uh, actually came up on stage with you. Right. Teller, okay. Teller, was the Teller. Guy, is the guy who doesn't talk. Because one, I think, I don't know much about them, but are they, they're kind of a little bit different, aren't they? Like personality wise, the two of them. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, don't, I mean, Teller doesn't talk. Penn does. So <laughs> Teller doesn't talk at all. In his performance character of Teller, he doesn't talk. Really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Huh. That's interesting. Oh, that's wild now. What <laughs> what a wild ride. I'm that's so funny that you like you were so stoked and then you were just like instantly critiquing. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's such a performer thing. And to also do. like, um yeah. Um yeah, the, the the guy who went on immediately before me uh, was a guy who fooled them and so I, I was like standing behind the giant video wall like listening and I you know that the, the trophy comes down or whatever and uh, th There's that's going on and wow. so I was like hey oh, he fooled them It was uh, a guy named Andre Chinichka who has been on the show three times oh, Fooled holy them shit. the first time fooled them the second time fooled them the third time. Um, oh my god, so uh, so yeah, I, I heard him fooling for the third time and uh, then I ran into him in the casino after the show and he was standing with uh, one of the other contestants whose name I can't say because she hasn't aired yet. So mm. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Ooh, top secret. <clears throat> and uh, so I, I was like, hey, congratulations on fooling them for the third time. And he was like, yeah, thanks. Uh, and then the the woman standing next to him was like, how do you know? And I was like, oh, I went on stage uh, right uh, after him. Uh, I forgot I wasn't supposed to uh, say oh, anything no. about okay, you're supposed to keep it secret about <laughs> fooling but I was like we're amongst magicians it's okay but but then I was like oh he didn't tell her whoops oh <laughs> shit you, spo you magic spoiled <laughs> yeah exactly because you know it, the contract you sign is like you know if you tell anybody whether what you know the outcome of what happened you owe the CW a million dollars or whatever oh my god a million it's always some absurd number <laughs> holy smokes that's crazy. That's oh, that's wild. Let's talk about actual um, tricks. Okay. So, do you have a favorite trick that you've? No. 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 They're like all so. your like you love them all the same. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> no. Because uh, I imagine it's so like tricks like, that I do. You're saying? Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't say I, I have a favorite. You know, I have a few that I like or like you know yeah basically uh, anything I'm working on for the virtual show there's like 
four of them that I think are like pretty good. Right. But like tricks are good for different reasons as well yeah. in like the context of a show like this trick accomplishes x with the audience this trick is really amazing this trick is you know slightly amazing but it accomplishes this or you know that kind of thing that's interesting yeah and what like again i don't know shit about magic but like <laughs> what are the different types of tricks like because you have card tricks like like are there other different yeah. categories <clears throat> so of uh, tricks there ha- there is like a lot of magic literature mm. that uh, there are different theories of categorizing magic. So mm. there was one guy called Daryl Fitzky who came up with like the most famous, like there, I think he came up with like seven or 17 categorizations for magic. Oh, but yeah, crap. basically the, uh, the, I would, okay. I would say that the most common are probably uh, mentalism, which is uh, mind reading or like moving things with your mind, uh, mind based magic. Um, and then there's like, uh, uh card magic and close-up magic parlor magic uh but um oh, yeah. those are like you know kind of performance differences and then right. this daryl fitzky guy kind of broke it down into like on the trick level where it's like there are vanishes there are appearances Ooh. there are transpositions there's mind reading the there's, mind reading uh, one is know, so all, fascinating all to stuff, me yeah, yeah that, that's like even your trick i'm like i still don't know how you did this Perfect. I was literally watching. Trying That's to ideal. Good. You, you, you might not have fooled Penn and Teller, but you fooled me. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I'm there going like, I mean, I, I can I can assume things based on what they said. Yes. Uh, as to what was involved and stuff like but that. But also, like, I didn't. I knew I wasn't going to fool Penn and Teller, like because it's, uh, it's like, uh, you know, magicians kind of know what other magicians know, mm-hmm. sort of. Um, so I, I kind of knew I wasn't necessarily doing a uh, magician fooling trick. That was not right. really the intention. A lot of magician foolers are bad. You know, they're, ah. they're not entertaining for a regular audience. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Because it's like, you know, magicians have seen everything. So yeah. if you do something different, they're like, oh, okay. And so, and, and, if, and a lot of times, you know, uh, to fool Penn and Teller, maybe you have to have like a red herring where you're like doing a trick that's well known, um, but you're doing it a way that's different Uh than they know about. That's right. So like if you come up with like an alternate method for something, but it looks identical to the normal method, then then Penn and Teller might think that it's the original method. Or you could do a trick um, where you pretend that you're doing a move. So you make your trick slightly worse and then Penn and Teller will think that you did something that you didn't do. Um, So, Uh you know, there's been all of this all sorts of different ways that Penn and Teller have been fooled. Um, and uh, Does it happen a lot? Or is it a little more rare that they actually get fooled? It happens about uh, one-fourth of the time. One-fourth? Okay. Uh, because it, there's usually four magicians per episode, and usually there's one fooler per episode. My huh. episode had zero foolers. Really? Yeah. yeah. So you were your expectations were more so. I just want to do the best I can and be entertaining. Oh, absolutely, and, like, and just yeah. and just put on a good performance. Well, yeah, actually, I was kind of surprised. Like in the in the magic community, you know, fool us is just seen as like this is a, a great show to showcase magic. Um, and so uh, after I taped the show and like I was telling people about it, uh, <laughs> and people were like, "Oh, okay, yeah." So there are winners and losers. I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what do you mean? Oh, I forgot about I'm a winner. I'm still a winner. I got fucking on it. What are you talking about? That's but a good yeah, attitude it, to have, though. But it, yeah, it's, it's also like, uh, you know, behind this, you know, behind this, uh, behind the scenes, Penn and Teller also talk about the show that way as well. Like, yeah. So like in the magic community, the people who work on the show and Penn and Teller, they are just like, you know, fooling us or not fooling doesn't really matter. But in fact, it it does have this uh, perception with the regular audience that it, it is like a win lose situation. Interesting. And then and then people who have fool like okay, here's well here's my big question for you. Yeah. Are you gonna try again? Are you gonna try to get back on? Um, I might. Mm. I might just because um, it was fun. And yeah. I bet I would be less nervous this time because I know the whole process. And 
all that and um you know a uh, free trip to vegas is very nice that's fucking amazing <laughs> that's that because you know i got to go see a whole bunch of other magic shows while i was down there that's the that's a really cool like memory to have like oh yeah absolutely absolutely um so yeah i think i would try again um this time you know <laughs> on the other side of it, I might try to fool them this time. I might try and like seriously think about, okay, how can I throw them off? Right. As opposed to doing um, an original trick, but uh, something that's more straightforward method wise mm-hmm. um, for magicians. Mm, that's a oh, challenge yourself a little bit. Yeah. Why not? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Do, do you know like what the future of the show is? Like in terms of like if they'll be. Yeah. So they've been renewed for another two seasons. Oh, that's um, good. And they're actually shooting another one in September or October somehow. I, I believe what Penn said on his podcast is that they are going to have like a giant video screen and magicians from like all over the world like zooming in basically oh and performing gosh. on the screen and they have to figure it out from the video and then about one fifth of the performers will actually come down, isolate and be on the stage. Oh, wild. Well, that's a good way to do it though. Yeah. That's yeah, I mean it yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting season of Fool Us um to watch. Just yeah. like the, the, the way the I actually have been watching like a few clips of America's Got Talent on YouTube, which is happening. That's a, basically what they're doing. They've got a few in-person performers, I think, and then otherwise they're just watching a giant screen sitting in directors chairs like outside. That's <laughs> so wild yeah all these shows are like finding ways to like adapt and yet people still suck at zoom (laughs) you know like these celebs with all these all this money they still suck at zoom it's wild zoom etiquette is a real real freaking thing but speaking of youtube so you actually so when when i was talking about coming on the podcast i found that reaction video um that another magician did of you and i sent it to you and you were like i'm gonna do a reaction to the reaction and yes. i was like that's number one <laughs> genius uh number two i've done a bunch of reaction videos myself and it's just a weird experience putting that up i've reacting especially reacting to yourself Like, it's one thing to react to something else, but then you're reacting to not only yourself and your performance, but what he he was thinking of you, which was interesting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It was, you know, it was weird. And yeah, I didn't realize, you know, I thought it was going to be easy. I thought, (laughs) okay, I'll just put a camera in front of me and I'll watch the video. Easy. Um, But it actually, you know, I was actually watching the video and uh, pausing and talking to the camera like for a long time and it was you know it's definitely a weird experience and i'm not necessarily all that comfortable in front of a camera or uh performing um so (laughs) but it doesn't show at all that's the thing it doesn't show you i think i think you're so great at it Uh, i appreciate it i appreciate it uh i want to keep getting better at it keep keep going um so yeah you know it was very uh unintuitive and Mm. um I did like a bunch of retakes of things where I'd start talking. I'd be like, no, that's not how I want to say that. I'll, yeah. I'll, re- I'll retake that. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that because <laughs> me too. Because as much as you want a reaction video to be like a genuine reaction, because mm-hmm. like I've done reactions to like Taylor Swift music videos where I'm literally crying. Like, and it's like, okay, this is great. But yeah, like there's moments where you like you want to say something more articulately and like Exa- yeah and then like you just need to redo it and the editing i think is the the hardest part of reaction videos yeah especially, it took me a long time <laughs> especially with music because youtube and copyright are mm. tricky and they will so you have to like record so much of like like a certain amount of seconds before you pause kind of thing it's really strange there's an art to reacting to music specifically oh yeah you I probably bet. you probably wouldn't have had to worry about that no and actually the cw is awesome because like every magician who appears on the show can put their segment on their own youtube channel oh that's and fantastic the CW does not make you take it down or anything oh and that's it's really nice really awesome <laughs> yeah because you have it you have a youtube channel so yes. are you are you looking to do more like i think like i personally freaking love reaction videos mm. like stuff like that and i think i mean i think you did a really good job of it you could keep reacting to people if you wanted to is that uh, something you want to do know. or is it too much too much work 
<laughs> <laughs> Too much time and work. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would like, I don't know. I feel like if I can find a way to be interesting on YouTube, that would be cool. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily my medium. Right. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm, I'll, I think I'll try and put some more YouTube videos on there. And I'm not sure if it'll necessarily be reaction videos. Yeah. Um, maybe it, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. That's interesting. Well, I, I think I think you got a knack for it. I think you, <laughs> I truly do. I will die on the hill. I think you're I think you're damn damn good at performing and 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 also YouTube. And and God love you for even just trying to be on YouTube because it's <laughs> a shit show. Did right. you ever um come across Okay, I'll just say it like it is. Did you read the comments on your videos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I read a bunch of comments. You know, lots of them not nice. Plenty really? of them nice. Uh, but you know, uh, I think it comes with the territory. I was talking like does. you know, uh, my friend Ian Stewart, who was on the show. He he said, "Don't read the comments." <laughs> And I was like, Smart well, advice. I mean, I'm definitely not going to not read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I it's need like, to know. <laughs> don't push the button. Do not push the button. Of course, I'm going to push it. And then I was talking to another guy who was previously on the show, is, uh, or who was on my season, actually, uh, Dev Sherman. We connected on Instagram, and then we talked virtually. He's in New Zealand, and that was cool. And he was like, yeah, you know, uh, don't read the comments. And I was like, mm. oh, interesting. Definitely going to read the comments. Yeah. But yeah. So, you know, read the comments and some of them not nice and uh, it, it doesn't make you feel good. How so <laughs> how did you sort of cope with cope with that? Cuz it's fucking hard. It's Yeah. It's it, it's easy with the the comments that I just disagree with. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 where it's just like like is there an example of one of those something someone said? Well, there was one guy who was just like uh, you know, he was a magician reacting, another magician reactor. Uh, and yeah. he was like, uh, I feel mentalism should be done like Colin Cloud. Colin Cloud is, you know, that that's the, the peak of mentalism. And I was just like, well, I mean, that's like, I don't know. What is that like? That's like criticizing a pizza for not being a sandwich or something. I don't know. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're i'm doing a different thing it's because you know uh, colin cloud he's a mentalist who is like i am a real mind not n- not fully like i am a real mind reader but like more serious mm. right, mind right, right. reading uh and it's just you know not what i was going for right. so and immediately i was just like well i i just disagree with that on its face and also too i feel like the worst youtube comments are the ones that are so clearly just like assumptions and like like these people took no time to like look into you or what you do. Like like it's literally just they saw it, they had a reaction, and they went and typed it. <laughs> and it's just so like you don't know. Like right. <laughs> like like they, they truly don't know. And it's every time I see like really negative comments, I just picture what that person's life must be like to take the time to freaking do that. You know it's what I true. mean? Especially it's where it's like where with you like like you're like someone who loves magic and you get on this really big show and it's like just fucking go, like fuck <laughs> off. Let people have joy. Can you let people have joy? I I, I kind of get it with if you're like a YouTube personality and you've made the choice like this is my medium and I'm going right. to be on this medium and I'm going to get fans from this and get paid from this. Like yeah, it's kind of like people are going to grow to know you and grow to really not like you. But like someone who's like on a friggin' competition show, like wanting to do their thing, relax. <laughs> cut, cut them some and, and also it's like there are negative comments for literally everyone. Yeah. So it's like if, if I look at any clip <laughs> from Fool Us, under there, there's negative comments, no matter how amazing the performer is, uh, mm. or even, yes, if you are Beyonce. Yeah, exactly. Or wh- whoever you are, no matter, you know, the, the world's most amazing uh, performer, who you think, oh my God, I could never atri- uh, achieve that level of perfection. That person has people who hate them and are writing negative comments on YouTube or Reddit or wherever. Very and sad. so, uh, you know. It is what it is. Not I'm glad everyone. that you admitted to reading them, though, because some people are just like, yeah, I don't care. Had to read them. Had to. Yeah, it's it's really hard not to. Really hard not to. Yeah, yeah I because I have, yeah, I have a Taylor Swift reaction, uh, album reaction, and the comments are still coming in on that, and that album came out like a month ago, and yet people are still commenting on it, like, 
why are you feeling this way about this song? It's a beautiful song about nurses and the sacrifice of nurses. And I'm like, bitch, I was just bored. Like, oh, I, am I allowed to not like a song? You know? Huh. <laughs> like, <laughs> I listened to that album and uh, the one about nurses did not immediately jump out for me. Uh, Although I don't really listen to lyrics uh, like oh, the first like seven times or something. Yeah, and yeah. Like, at, a, at some point I'll hear the lyrics. And I'll be like, oh, that's what this song's about. And same with me. <laughs> like when I was listening to that, like I it was a legitimate first reaction. I don't know how other people do album reaction videos but like for me it was literally like my first time ever hearing these songs and i if if it's if it doesn't catch me as a song like the melody and the beat and the feel i'm gonna be bored and i was bored obviously i think it's like a beautiful song lyric wise but like i was just being honest and like people like <laughs> these swifties are insane because mm. they expect you to know everything about her life and then you get a fact wrong and they'll they'll correct you right away this album was like the first album, uh, Taylor Swift album I listened to all the way through because everybody yeah. was talking about it on Twitter and I was just like, I guess I should listen to it. Um, yeah. what, what did you think? Did you like it? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah. like uh, there were three songs on there that I added to my Spotify playlist. So oh. I was like, okay, cool. I like those three. What Do you remember which ones? Um, the one about tears ricocheting. Ah, uh, so I like that one. Uh, the first one I liked. Yeah. And uh, the one about the house. Oh, uh, the last great American dynasty. Yes. Yeah, 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 that that is a good one. And uh, choices. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, uh, I was told when I was down in Cape Breton that that song is about uh, the person who used to own her house. Yep. uh, Somebody named last name Harkness. Yeah. And then uh, my uh, Laura's cousin's boyfriend was down, and. He is distantly related to that Harkness because his up. last name is also Harkness. And I was like, "Wow, cool!" That's he really wild. liked the album. Oh <laughs> yeah, that would be well. It's interesting what she did with this one, and I, and I think like you could probably appreciate it too from like like your English background and writing and stuff like that. And what she's done with like she's usually written songs about her life, and this was an album where she actually just told stories. Like, she told stories in the form of songs about other people. Mind you, I still think that there's some personal, you know, Easter eggs and some okay. of those. But that's just, I'm not, yeah, that's I'm not just too familiar thing. with her uh, oeuvre overall. Yeah, yeah, this this was a wildly different album for her. So oh, okay. it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see. But we're at an hour 21. I think it's time. <laughs> the moment that I'm very excited about, which is to see some tricks potentially, if okay. you're willing to do some. And yeah. this is where I will tell you listeners listening in your car or if you're just listening, like cleaning your apartment, pause here because I still want the download. <laughs> I still want the audio download. But go over to uh, youtube.com backslash intoxicated and you can see what we are doing because this will be very visual. Right. Although I'm going to keep it in. Oh my God, we didn't talk about your book. We'll talk about that after the tricks. Okay. Let me let me remind uh, me to ask you about your book. Okay. Uh, let's. Oh, how can we? Yeah, we can make some space. Yeah. So you gotta watch this this part <laughs> on YouTube because otherwise it's just gonna be a lot of like silence and me looking shocked probably. We'll try and do some descriptions as well. Yeah. Okay. We'll perfect. Narrate. That, that'll keep things in, uh, in frame. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> I am a collector of weird stuff. Uh Uh-oh. What are we about to see? Is it going to be a box of teeth? I'll give you an example. (laughs) What is that? (laughs) So, you know, stuff like this, I like. Are there different animal calls on that? Or is it just the one? Uh, There's a different one. Bear? Yeah, that's a bear. One, two, three, four. There's five animal Shut calls. Up. But my favorite is definitely the loon. Oh, I love the loon. Hey, oh, I uh, ran out of battery right here. Oh, no. Nope. That loon? That sounds like a frantic loon. I've only ever heard loons, like, in Bridgewater, where my grandmother is from. Oh. And, like, it's always been very peaceful. That loon sounds like it's freaking out. <laughs> As it should be. It's like inside a bear head. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair. <laughs> That's crazy. I love so, that. So, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll show you uh, some items from my collection. Ooh. Let's see here. It looks like... 
I have two sticks. Uh huh. But they're actually the same stick, unstuck in time. Unstuck in time. Take one. Take one? Take a stick. Now, which one did you get? Yesterday? Yesterday. That leaves me with today. Mm. So these are the same stick. That's yesterday's stick. This is today's stick. And I believe that if we alter yesterday, we can affect today. Ooh. So would you snap yesterday in half? I'm scared. I'll just snap it now. I'm allowed to snap it? Yeah, snap it. Really? Like Yeah, right in right in half. Oh my god, what? <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> oh what? I'm gonna have to replay that on the video. That whoa. I do believe that though. Odd. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe if you alter yesterday, you could. Yeah, I'm a big believer in that. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. <laughs> that was that was wild. <laughs> I was thinking uh, now that I've shown you uh, something, maybe you could show me something. Ooh, okay. Um. So, uh, I've got in my collection these big books. I didn't bring th this particular book because it's massive. Mm -hmm. But um, in the book, there's this 13-step lucky card ritual. And okay. I thought we could try it out. And um, basically, we need a sitter and a reader. Okay. Uh, so I thought, I'll be the sitter, you be the reader, and then and you do it. So th there are steps here. OK. Um, and I read, I read this? Yeah. Do you have a uh, Can I use your pen like a little scrap of mm -hmm. an index card? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've just realized uh, in the instructions, it says we need a talisman related to the eye. And uh, I uh, didn't bring one, so. I guess I'll just. Uh, okay, I'll just so what am it. I doing? I'm reading. Yeah, what's step one there? Step one: spread through the faces of the cards quickly, allowing the images to be taken in by your subconscious. Okay, well, yep, go go for it. Okay, so what do I do? Here, I'll give you the cards. So spread through the faces of the cards quickly, allowing, like I'll, very I'll, here, very. I'll, I, I can read it. So okay. I, I can read it to you. So okay. yeah, spread, spread through the, the the faces of the cards quickly, and then, and then uh, let the images be taken in by your subconscious. Am I doing this right? Oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah. When, go for it. When when uh. All right, I think you're okay. good. Okay. Mix the cards. Are you a good shuffler? I'm not too bad. I don't think. Sweet. I mean, I don't. Kind of, kind of suck at that. But can I shuffle like this? Yeah, do whatever you want. I'm more comfortable with that. Go nuts. Okay. All right, uh, step three, offer the sitter, that's me, a mm -hmm. blind face down choice of any card. Face down. And I don't look at where I'm Whoa. finding the card. Oh yeah, just uh, just you know, spread them a little bit or uh, whatever and I'll take one without looking as well. Okay, what's the next step? Next step is tell them this is your lucky card. Remember it. Okay. So this is your lucky card. This remember it. This is my it? lucky card. Okay. I'll remember it. Step five. Once they've acquainted themselves with their lucky card, tell your sitter to put the card back amongst the other cards. Okay. So you go with your card. Yes. Put it on back. There it is. Okay. Um, mix lucky card in amongst the other cards thoroughly. All okay. right, mix them in there, mix them in there. Okay, I feel like I'm the magician in this, this is. Yeah, essentially. Okay, okay, I'm gonna mix in. I really gotta get better, better at shuffling. Especially <laughs> if I wanna read tarot, which I'm trying to learn. Oh, neat. Um, okay. All right, step seven, tap the deck with your ring finger, speaking these words. Feelings create thoughts, thoughts trigger actions, actions shape reality. With my index finger, like just like that, I tap. Oh, uh, your ring finger. Ring finger. Mm. Right here. Um, okay, it is feelings create thoughts, thoughts trigger actions, actions shape reality. Perfect. Step eight: make a discordant sound to make the moon weep. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> just like a. Uh, I think it's an <laughs> unmusical sound. Like just a, a bad sound. Yeah, I guess so. I mean. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> 
That's good. Okay. <laughs> Step nine. Take the sitter's talisman in your hand and wiggle it a lot. So that's this one. It's uh, related to the eye. Okay. And wiggle it? Wiggle it. Like, what is wiggling? I mean, I, I don't know. It just says wiggle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now you can cut the cards as many times as you wish. Okay. I'll just put them like... Oh, sure. Yeah, it's not too clear on on uh, on that. Just do that. All right, blindly, face down, uh, take any one card from anywhere and place it in the middle of the table. Okay. Um, uh, neither from neither the reader nor the sitter should see this card's identity. Okay. So and and from anywhere in the deck or on, from on top? Anywhere. Anywhere. Anywhere in the deck, it looks like. Okay. Okay. And now it says, ask the sitter. The name of their lucky card. Okay. What is the name of your lucky card? Mine was the Queen of Diamonds. Okay. And then turn over the blindly chosen card. If, if this is the sitter's lucky card, like we'll smile on both of you. So I turn it over? Yeah. And you said Queen of Diamonds? Yeah. Shut the fuck up! No! It worked! No! How about that? What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Luck for both of us. What? I legitimately... Huh. <laughs> that's wild. If and, this and, is that, not... That's, that's just a scanned copy, so you can keep that if you want. Can I? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I you love can... it. But I still don't know how you did it. <laughs> Well, I mean, you did it. <laughs> That's insane. Followed the instructions um, and it worked. I like how it says, if if it's not the sitter's lucky card, you must burn the deck of cards and never attempt this ritual again. <laughs> Your sitter may be jinxed. Maybe a jinx. So take three minute cold shower to prevent... <laughs> I love that. Wow. I wonder what the... Um, I'm just talking out loud to the listeners here. Yeah. I wonder what me scanning through the cards had to do with anything. That's like the part that I'm I'm not. <laughs> You're like, I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, it's it, I think the ritual just works. I think that's that's what it is. That's crazy. Luckily, I'm not a jinx. Oh, uh, my gosh. That was wild. All right. Uh, I'll show you one more thing. OK. For this, we need a simple, concrete thought. OK. And here's what I'm going to do. Oops. On my phone, mm -hmm. I have a grocery list in my notes. It's got about 35 items on it. So why don't you uh, think of a number between 1 and 35 and then change your mind twice or don't. It's up to you. And I think it. Don't say it out loud. Uh, for now, yeah. So uh, you can change your mind twice or don't. Okay. Up to you. You've got a number between 1 and 35? Yeah. Okay. What's Got the it. number? What have you landed 17. on? 17. Did you change your mind twice or you? I changed my mind once. You changed your mind once. Okay, very good. So here we go. Let's. Uh, Should I have changed it twice? No, uh, it's, uh, it's up okay. to you. Okay. Uh, are you happy with 17? I'm happy or with 17. Do you want a different number? No, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look here at my notes. Uh, <laughs> okay. There's my notes there. You want to tap on the notes there. And then uh, groceries are the top list. And so just take a look through and make sure, you know, it's, it's a bunch of different items. And then let's take a look at what's at number 17. So do I say it aloud? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm, peanut butterfly. Peanut, peanut butterfly. <laughs> okay. Well, autocorrect, I guess. Uh, <laughs> that should say peanut butter because okay. there's... <laughs> no such thing as a peanut butterfly. Um, so, do you like peanut butter? I do. Okay, well, that's good. So, yeah, um, peanut butter. And uh, if you had chosen a different number, uh, you would have gotten a different thing, right? Yeah, all kinds of... Doesn't... Okay. Yeah, all kinds of food on there. Pork what, chops. what was your first number? My first, my first number was 19. 19. So, in that case, it would have been chili powder. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so we went with 17, 18. which is... Uh, peanut butter, not <laughs> peanut butter fly. <laughs> so, 
here's what we're going to do with this thought. Imagine that there was a box. And anything that you imagine, when you open that box, there it would be. Okay, anything I can imagine? Should We're I think going to use this thought we've just chosen, this simple, concrete thought that we can both envision, because it has to be something we're both thinking of. The box only works when there's not conflicting thoughts. We both have to be thinking about peanut butter at the exact same time and only peanut butter. If we have conflicting thoughts, it's not going to work. We're both thinking about peanut butter? Yes. So, peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. butter. When we open the box, there should be peanut butter inside. Were you thinking of leaves? <laughs> no. You weren't thinking of leaves? No. <laughs> Is there peanut butter in the bottom? Uh, the hell? <laughs> what is... <sighs> Stop. Is that a... Is that a chrysalis? Zoom it in. It's a peanut butterfly. What are the fucking chances? One to 35. It's a real one, too. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Another mouth to feed. How? How? I, ne- I gotta know how that one worked. Is 17 just like a number people tend to think of a lot with 1 to 35? You changed your mind. I you did. You could have had... I could have had... 19. You could have had chili, chili powder. powder. Whoa! That was... Wow. <laughs> so you can see how conflicting thoughts... They don't work. It's supposed to be peanut butter. Uh, peanut butter fly. Not ideal outcome that we want, uh, but, you know, I'm going to keep working on it, and I think next time it's going to work better. You, you can see, you know, things you always go close. wrong for me. You were very close. And after I got my lucky card, too, I thought it was going to go really well. You were half right. You had the peanut. <laughs> Just no butter. Yeah. <laughs> that was wild. Peanut butterfly. That was so fun. Oh, my God. Oh. That was a that my heart was pounding. I gotta I I, 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 I gotta say yeah I I I think because I get nervous because that was another thing that I was gonna ask you about tricks. Okay. Have you ever had a what I would call like a trick bomb? Like, did you ever have a moment where it didn't work? Oh yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. Plenty of times. How do you deal with a trick bombing? I mean, uh, often there's like no recovery. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah like, Much like stand up. <laughs> yeah. One time at the bus stop theater, I had a uh, a trick that was, you know, it just it just went totally wrong. I didn't have a trick after that, and uh, I had like people up from the audience, and so I was basically like, "Okay, well, thank you, I've been Vincenzo Ravina." I like <laughs> ran off stage, leaving my audience volunteers on, up there. <laughs> Just left. Like, I'm Just done. Like, done. Bye. <laughs> That's great. But it doesn't happen a lot, eh? Um, Probably not. Not, uh, you know, I mean, it, it happens. Yeah. But it, uh, you know, you, you try and avoid it. You try. <laughs> you do. But you also, you wrote a book. I did. So uh, yes. can we tell, well, you wrote several books, didn't you? I brought it. Oh, amazing. 
amazing. Peril and exploit and other mysterious tales. That's unreal. So when did you write this? So uh, it's a collection of short stories. So I've actually been working on, like, there are some stories in here that are from, like, 2014. And then there are uh, several stories. One, two, three. Three that I wrote during the pandemic. No way. So this is new. So, yeah, it's a collection of six stories and three of them I wrote during the pandemic, and I think three of them were written previous to that. Oh my gosh! So did you set out to write a book, or did you have these stories that you writ like that you wrote, and then you just decided to publish them? How? Um, yeah, a bit of both. Basically, yeah. it was like you know I have some stories, uh, but I'd also you know I don't have enough for a, a book, and uh, so I, I wrote some more. Uh, oh. So uh, yeah, and I've been I've been trying to write like one short story every month during the pandemic, um, ah. and uh, I was doing it for a while. This month has been a little busier, so I haven't actually mm. written a short story this month. But uh, yeah, I got the the this book I just put out a couple of weeks ago. Is it hard to self motivate yourself to write every day? Um, yeah, you know, I, I am lazy. <laughs> also a theme of the show. We yeah. like lazy people. Here. And, uh, I procrastinate a lot. So, um, well, I was going to ask cause, um, I was going to ask your advice cause you're a writer. You've obviously a very talented writer. Um, Maybe. what mm. are there, is there anything that you would recommend, um, people to do when they feel uninspired to write something and, because this is a comedy podcast, I'm more thinking like when people want to write jokes and they're trying to come up oh. with premises for jokes or like something funny to write about. Is there anything that <laughs> you know of? To... Yeah, or like even just little things to like trigger inspiration or like creativity. Like, I don't know. Like, you, I always see those, um, what are they called? Not writing journals. They're um, like little books with like writing exercises in them. Sure. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about, like prompts and stuff. Prompts, yeah, yeah. writing prompts, that's the word. So I think uh, these, this is, these are pieces of advice that are not from me. These are pieces of advice that I've heard. I like this. Um, but uh, one that I think is probably valuable is, you know, writer's block usually comes from wanting to write something good and being unable to write something good. And so the solution to that is to write bad. So um, Dan Harmon on his podcast used to say, prove that you're the worst writer in the world. <gasps> oh. Just start writing the most hack, terrible stuff and like just, you know, write as much of that as you can. Eventually, you'll sift through it. You might get to something good. You might find a oh. kernel of something good that, that or that will set you off on something that will turn out to be good. Oh, interesting. Um, and uh, what's the other piece of advice? This will all be cut out in editing. <laughs> room noise. Yeah, this is the room tone. Well, I was time. because I made a comment to a friend of mine who's also a writer, uh, being like, "I kind of want to get a writing prompt just to like stretch my muscle every day to like get used to writing." Uh. And he was like, "Don't do that. That's so like stereotypical white girl <laughs> to get like <laughs> to get like a writing prompt book." <laughs> like I he kind of made fun of know, me for getting it. Is there whatever any, works. Is there I any think. merit in stuff like that? Like. I, I think it's honestly it's individual to the person. It's like whatever gets you writing is the yeah. right answer. Uh, right. Whatever whatever motivates you to write or results in words on a page is the correct answer. Right. Uh, and I, I remember the other thing. Oh, yeah. The other thing is just carry a notebook and write down stuff. Uh, yeah. Like every time you have an idea, make sure you write it down. Yeah, that's very true. I start doing that f with a joke book. Yeah, because yeah. like yeah, uh, I think Penn Jillette said on his podcast basically like he's a big Bob Dylan fan, and he was like, I thought Bob Dylan like when he wrote his albums, like everything just came out, and he just spew uh, you know spews brilliance. Yeah, uh, and it's like no, he has notebooks and notebooks and notebooks and notebooks and notebooks. Uh, you know, bad lyrics crotched out and everything. Mm -hmm. So you you have to write a lot in order to uh, write Get something something. To get and then there's other while. moments where you might you might have a moment of inspiration and just write something really good right away. Mm -hmm. But it, it is just the habit of, of constantly writing, eh? Like yeah. just making it a habit to constantly do it. Yeah, I would say so. Ah, very interesting. Okay, yeah, I just thought I'd ask you that just because like joke writing is something that I'm doing now and and um, I find that when I try to write, I don't get anything, but it's those like little moments of like, that's funny. And, and honestly, it is writing it down right away in yeah. the moment. Like because... We all have those moments where you think of something 
you don't write it down. And you forget. And the next day you're like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant and I forgot about it. But yeah, um, totally. It's like just, you know, the, the more you write things down, I think as well, the more you are training your brain to like have ideas. And uh, that's right. Some. You're 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 training your brain. Yeah, that's really what it is. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. Your, your brain's going to gym. <laughs> going to the exactly, gym exactly. I love it well we're gonna wrap the episode but I do have my three final questions for you I told you about these in advance do you remember mm-hmm. them I do uh, so I ask every guest <laughs> what you love about yourself what you don't love about yourself something that you're working on and an unpopular opinion yes okay so uh, what I love about myself I, I didn't uh, you know I, I didn't go for like the serious deep answers for that that's either. okay but yeah I, I think what I what I love about myself is that at least currently at this time and so far in my life up to this point I've been able to eat anything I wanted without worrying about gaining or losing wa- weight oh so, lucky uh, duck I feel very happy about that my metabolism is something I really like how old are you I am 32 that's you've like beaten it i feel like as soon as you get to like late 20s it starts to go downhill so have you oh, still got good. a good one? <laughs> i feel like if it's still good now you're probably good for a while uh, fingers crossed <laughs> fingers crossed because it seems tough yeah um and then the thing i don't like uh yeah. is just you know uh, what i was saying earlier uh, laziness procrastination lack of work ethic mm. uh i wish i had uh the ability to do more I put so much value on like being productive Mm -hmm. and every single day I'm like, why aren't I more organized? Like, I I don't think a day goes by that I don't kick myself for like just not getting a little more done because I put so much value in that. Mm. Um, It's really tough, though. It's it's a tough thing to do, especially if you're especially if you are like self-employed, self-motivated, like it's Mm. fucking hard. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, I'm also like a borderline hoarder, and I, I, I really? would like to not be a borderline hoarder. Oh, I just keep okay. way too much stuff, you know. I keep, yeah, I just have so much stuff. I feel like. Do you ha- have you ever read the the life changing? I have the book, the life changing art of tidying up. By uh, no, have I you ever watched, watched the Netflix show? I probably should because oh. apparently it motivated a lot of people to clean up. So I should probably watch that, and yeah. then maybe it'll motivate me to be like, all of my stuff is garbage. But if you're all your garbage brings you joy don't watch it because she'll make you keep it if it brings you joy right right. so if you're looking at all your garbage going well all this makes me happy you'll never get rid of it (laughs) yeah yeah i think uh having it is good but then not having room for it is the problem that's what it is so i just need to be rich and have a giant house yes yes you do and an unpopular opinion so i don't think this is going to be an unpopular opinion in this room but mm. the ending of Lost is good. <gasps> ah! 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Pee Wee Herman, like that's the word of the day. <laughs> oh my gosh, so you're a Losty. Oh yeah, I'm uh, doing a rewatch right now. I'm on Shut season up. five. Oh, God, I love season five. It's oh, so good. Oh my God. See, I tried to do a rewatch and I think I made it to three. Okay. And then I, and then I teetered off. But I agree. I make jokes that... Uh, it's very important to me to find a partner that doesn't isn't one of these people who's like the ending of Lost was terrible. Like I'm okay if you're like it was all right, it wasn't amazing. Yes, but it wasn't terrible. And it wasn't. If you watch the show and if you get the show and understand it, you'll realize it wasn't terrible. The people who don't get it are the ones who are saying it was shit. Yeah, that's a big pet peeve. Is just people who watch the show. And then somehow misunderstood it. I feel like it's pretty, it's not an ambiguous ending to me. Um, But uh, there's also just people who, you know, uh, watching the show in real time, they had so many expectations. They had theories that they liked, that they wanted to be true. And, you know, they kind of, I think, built it up in their heads too much. So I feel like this unpopular opinion is becoming less and less unpopular because people who binge the show, apparently, I think they like the ending. I, I, I think especially binging. Yeah. Because you're taking it all in at once. There's no breaks. Like, there's no time for you to get off track, to, like, think differently. And also, it wasn't these friggin' idiots who, like, ran Damon Lindell off off of Twitter because yeah, of it. Like, yeah. relax. Like, I truly believe that, like, a show should not be judged purely on its ending you need to look at the entire body of work and that show was fucking amazing overall. Did yeah. it have flaws? Absolutely. I will <laughs> was say. Was it a headache to watch sometimes? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but it, it shouldn't have been judged 
I, I feel like a lot of people don't give it a chance because they're like, oh, that's the show with the bad ending. And I'm like, no, fucking watch no, it. No. I will say I didn't like Game of Thrones' ending. I thought, oh, that yeah. Was that, like, <laughs> that, <laughs> I think we that, can agree that, on that. <laughs> that kind of tainted my Game of Thrones experience. <laughs> Do you watch, have you watched any other Lindelof shows? Have you watched? I watched Le- Leftovers and Watchmen and I liked them very much. Oh, I'm yeah. so glad. I'm also a big Leftovers fan. Well, I wouldn't say I'm a Leftovers fan is the thing, be- thing because while I really enjoyed it, I have no intention of ever watching it again. I just found uh, it so man. depressing. It is not, <laughs> it is not for the fan of heart. Yeah. I will say that it is a little out there. But But I love the ending of that show, too. That ending is great. Great ending. I actually filmed, so I filmed my reaction to the ending. Oh, nice. Uh, I have the reaction because it was was definitely um, calmer and more chill than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. I think with that show, I was expecting like a more explosive ending, and it definitely kind of surprised me. But a very, I think he, like, I mean, I think, I mean, I loved the ending of Lost, but like, I think... In the fandom of Lindelof, he kind of redeemed himself with the leftovers ending a bit. I think people were a lot happier with that one, generally speaking. Yeah, the tide has turned a little bit because, you know, people enjoyed Watchmen, people enjoyed leftovers, so... That's right. Did you enjoy Watchmen? I've only watched a couple episodes, but from what okay. I saw, I loved it. Oh, nice. But yeah, like, yeah. I just, I'm just bad at keeping up with TV. Fair. If you're in that universe, I, I highly recommend Mr. Robot. Highly, highly recommend it. Have you watched... I have not. (laughs) Keep it on your radar. It's in that wheelhouse. (laughs) It is. And that is a show that I will not like. I swear to God, best ending ever. Oh, wow. Better than better than Lost. And I love Lost so much. But the the end of Mr. Robot, it was four seasons ended on its own terms. Ended perfectly. Ended perfectly. For me, like best endings probably are like six feet under. Ooh, yes. Those are real good endings to me. Oh, man, now we're talking TV. I can talk talk forever about it. Uh, You could not have picked a better unpopular opinion for for me, truly. Oh, my gosh. This was was so fun. This was very fun. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. This was a blast. I need everyone to know. Okay, so you got to watch Vincenzo's appearance on Penn & Teller. Fool Us. It's on YouTube. I will put a link to it in the description of this podcast. My website is VincenzoRavina.com. Um, figure yeah. out the spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Copy and paste it from the podcast yeah. title. <laughs> um, I think I have a domain that redirects to my website, ahmyeyes.com. Oh That's my God, A-H really? A-H my eyes.com. <laughs> A-H my eyes.com. That might be easier to spell. That's and hilarious. And there you can find my book and uh, my virtual show and all that. Oh my gosh, yeah. Please check out what, what he's do- you're doing because... Um, it's, it's awesome. And I happen to know, um, I had friends put on a variety show back, you know, back in the winter before all this bullshit happened. And they had a magician on along with drag performers and comedians. And so we're always looking for people to be part of variety shows. So I'm gonna keep you in mind. I'm a variety performer. And, and, (laughs) and I'm going to, I'm going to tell her about you because if we ever do another one of those shows, you'd be great on it. Cause we had, uh, we had Bill Wood on. Oh, I love Bill Wood. He does magic now. Uh, Bill Wood, is, yeah, I've, I've, he's been in the club for years. Oh, we, we, we hung out a couple of days ago. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. So then there we go. So maybe Vincenzo will be back on the stage, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. If we Have don't. you had Bill Wood on here? Uh, no, I haven't. I'd love to, though. He's excellent. He's yeah. such a, like, he puts me, he makes me feel so calm. I don't know what it is about him. Yeah, he's he's a great guy. But hopefully you'll be back on the stage soon. But you're doing cool shit. You should be very proud of yourself extremely talented guy and thank and thank you so much for coming on the podcast and you get to ring the bell Woo. we're done